Here we go with D2L training. I'm going to introduce you to quizzes and we're going to make a basic quiz. This is version 9.4 of D2L and the next version released will probably be 10 and it will be released within a year or so but I don't think quizzes are going to change that much. So let's get started. My name is Melissa Green and I've been working with Sac City faculty to get up and running on D2L for some time. And you can find information about other programs like this uh, to support your use of D2L at the websites listed here. I'd like to talk about two things that are important, kind of setting the stage. We have given faculty a student ID so that they can log in to D2L in a one web browser as a student and log in officially as an instructor in their employee ID. So if you don't know what that is, you'll need to contact uh, Jory Hadsell, David Martin, or me to help you get up with your student ID. I'm going to recommend that you create a job aid to remind you of quiz settings. Quiz settings are a little bit of a tangle. They are complicated. There are several steps to them that we trip over regularly. Now I even have an example job aid that'll kind of get you started. I'll show you that in a minute. I would also recommend that your quiz library, your quiz, and your grade item have very similar names. It's much easier to have a quiz that is named the Egyptian Parliament and a grade item that is named Egyptian Parliament than it is to have a quiz item called week one quiz and grade item week one grade item. Also off this list you will see the uh, quiz library sampler that I have for you and this is a real insight into having several different question formats and you can play around with them. You get used to editing the text of the questions. So it's a great place to experiment. The quiz helper form will also let you work offline to prepare quiz questions and you will then upload that into the question library. The two job aids that I have are the quiz setting notes as well as a quiz dates planner. It just kind of helps to have those things as you go about making the various changes and edits as you begin to use quizzes and as next semester you go ahead and um, update your, your course and pull in those quizzes, change the dates that they're due. So the job aids I have for you, the quiz preparation, includes some instructions and it includes the field that you can copy and paste. When you're finished with the form, you're going to actually create a text document, but you're going to save it not as TXT, you're going to save it as .csv. And you'll notice all the commas in here. That's what CSV stands for, is a comma separated values format. Okay, so D12 knows what to do with all those commas, so don't go changing commas here. The other job aid is just kind of here's some information, jot down what your choices are as you create your quizzes so that you have kind of a common thread for all of them. And again, the quiz date reference. Whoa, all right, so now let's begin the real workshop. 
I want you to know the difference between the question library, let's call that a quiz pool, and a quiz. You'll create some basic multiple choice quizzes and the power here is that they can be automatically graded. To me that's almost a, I'd rather have that be known as a homework thing than a quiz thing. Also, uh, you'll want to look at how the grades are reported to you, the different kinds of uh, information about, you know, was this a really good question? Uh, or were people just completely off the mark on this? You'll also uh, see how to log in and take a quiz as that student account I mentioned earlier. And then you'll also review the quiz under your instructor ID again. So let's see what some of these parts are. So the question library again is a question bank, a test bank. Often these come from a publisher and you get to decide which questions out of their, well, are you very satisfied with publisher questions? You know, I would expect you would actually add to it and improve their questions quite a bit. So you can do that in a question library. The beauty of a question library is that, that a question used in quiz one can also be used in exam one when you're combining quiz one, quiz two, and quiz three into a bigger exam. So generally, the difference between a question library and a quiz is students take quizzes. They don't take question libraries. A couple of other assessment options are available, the survey and self-assessments. I would really caution against using those, particularly in your first semesters of using D2L. What, you know, sit down and think about it first before you uh, create a survey or a self-assessment. Self-assessments for them, they kind of are thinking this is homework, but if you ever wanted to really see what are students getting out of that, it's harder to see that. So let's stick with quizzes. Now I want to give you a, a question library tour and the quizzes might or might not be on your navigation bar for your course. In the instructor only area, we do have a, a link to quizzes. And generally, we don't see a link to the question library, but when we get to quizzes, then we see the option to enter the question library. You'll see more details on that in the live demo. So the question library interface actually looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? I see folders, and I see questions. And I see that pencil with the edit button. Notice that the tools highlighted at the bottom, move, delete, order, edit values, are also repeated at the top of the list of questions. Often over on the far left are check boxes. So we'll be marking a check and then using the move, the reorder, or the delete button. But if we want to edit the question, then we're going to click on the pencil related to that question. D2L offers many question types. The ones that can be automatically graded are true and false, multiple choice, multiple select, matching, and ordering. So the ones that can't are the rest of them on this page. So if you really want to use that auto graded feature and you still want to have short answer or long answer questions, I'm going to recommend that you break your quizzes into part A and part B or part one and part two. So we go back to Egyptian Parliament Part A, Egyptian Parliament Part B. So again, be very specific. 
And so the, the questions that can be automatically graded give students feedback about how they're doing right away. So that's really good. The other ones you have to grade. And so you want to have a little more time in order to be to get in there and grade them and write the feedback. So um, it's nice to be able to break it into the two parts. If both essay questions and objective questions are in the same quiz, they cannot be automatically graded. So you're going to have to get in there and grade those quizzes. So that's why I'm advocating part A and part B. So if you follow my path and you take my example CSV file, or start using that form and create your own questions, you'll be able to import this file and it will automatically bring in all of these questions. And again, I've highlighted the ones that can be automatically graded. But that form, you can use it to create short answer questions, long answer questions, everything. When you're looking at the actual question, the title is optional, but it is really helpful. It's what you see in the list. Sometimes when we've imported questions from a publisher, the title is also the question text itself. So that would be helpful. If you're going to work directly in D2L, it is also possible for you to open up Microsoft Word because maybe that's the word processor you've used to write your quizzes in the past that have all been produced on paper, you're able to paste text directly from Word into D2L. But what I want you to do is go to the Advanced tab and use the Paste from Word button. Okay. Questions can also have pictures. and with questions with pictures, you want to describe the photo, the image, the graphic, without giving away the answer. That could be tricky. Uh, so keep that in mind, but that is an ADA accessibility issue. Also, when you're editing the question, further down after the you've posed the question, Notice that you can randomize the list of options. So this is a multiple choice example. So A, B, C, D, we're not going to write that directly. We're going to let D2L present the A, B, C, D. We're just going to write the prompt in here. So if you've got a test, a quiz that you're copying out of Word, you don't want to be copying A and the question or the prompt B and the prompt, C and the prompt, and pasting it in here. You just want the prompt itself. Now, again, this is an, a multiple choice question. As we go down this list, one of the things is that each time somebody takes this quiz, it can randomize the order of what's presented to them. So that might be useful and helpful. Okay, the other is that in a multiple choice question, something has to be a hundred percent right. Oh yeah, you could give 10% or 25% to another answer, but one of them has to be a hundred percent right. And in the beginning, I wouldn't make some answers partial credit. I just wouldn't, but you can play around with this yourself. So again, we've scrolled back up to the top of the question. This is the online form. You know, Edit, after you're looking at this, edit the answer, edit the question. You can preview, and you can obviously save this, these changes. You can also save this question and copy it so that you can use it as a model for a new question, that kind of thing, okay? Or if you want to save a new, then you kind of st you're going to stay in the quiz, but you're making a new question, making new choices. So I would advocate that you make a practice quiz. It's a great exercise for you to make a practice quiz. It's also a great exercise for your students to have a practice quiz so they know what, what is expected. 
it's kind of a way they can test their own browser. But let's look at the list of pieces you have to juggle as you're building a quiz. We create something, anything in D2L. We have a properties, which always is where we're going to have the name and we're going to select, in this case, whether or not it's auto-graded. Then we have the other tabs here, restrictions, and that's where it's got to be active for students to be able to see a quiz link. Attempts are under the attempts tab. And then submission views is often a place we get mixed up. So if you want students to be able to see responses and answers and things like that, that's all under submission views. And then to actually build the quiz, you go to the layout add questions area. All right. So let's look now at restrictions. And you'll see that availability, that, that a new quiz is inactive or it has start dates. So if you've just created a quiz, it will be inactive. Students will not see a link yet. You have to make it active. If you've copied quizzes from a previous semester, it can have start, it can be active, but it can have old start dates. So you need to go back in and look at the dates on all of your quizzes. Also in restrictions, you can require the Respondus Lockdown Browser and the idea with the Respondus Lockdown Browser is that you're preventing cheating. And I would challenge that particular uh, marketing strategy for Respondus. I think that with the amount of smartphones people have, um, the amount of technology people have, that just by locking down a browser doesn't guarantee that somebody doesn't have some other reference. You know, open book test is certainly part of the formula here. On the restrictions tab, you can also set a password and a time limit. And you can also give students who um, come to you with their DSPS paperwork uh, an option to extend time for a quiz. Attempts, while you can allow unlimited attempts, I think that's really not very practical. I would say truly three attempts is probably a good number, but again, this is up to you and, and whatever experience you have uh, going in or um, changing your mind after a semester or two. The submission views is, is one of those challenging areas. This is the default view. So as soon as someone, a student finishes the class, they are told, um, you know, that they've, their quiz has been so successfully submitted, but it's not going to show them information about the quiz. It's not going to show the questions. It's not going to show the statistics. Usually it shows their grade. I got seven out of eight correct or something like that. This is again is a great reason why you want to have that student login. So you can actually prepare that practice quiz, prepare another quiz, and then go, go look at your, your account under the student browser and know whether or not it is visible, it is active, and go ahead and take that quiz. So rather than change the default setting, I think each semester you're going to end up adding a submission view. So again, this is where you want to have your own job aid or modify the one I've prepared as kind of a starting point. So a second quiz um, a second submission view would be to show responses and answers. And notice that I can add that additional view and I've given it a very detailed name that reminds me what that what is visible to the students. So quiz responses and answers. Now 
part of what I imagine happening in, in using a learning management system is that you're going to open a quiz uh, on Tuesday and you're going to close that quiz on Friday. That's any day of the week. Any, but go with me on this. So you want this second submission view when all of the answers and questions are visible to students to open after the last time students can take the quiz. So that would be, let's say, Saturday, right? So we opened, uh, opened the quiz on Tuesday. We closed the quiz at 11 o'clock on Friday. So on Saturday, for example, we would open the submission view. In other words, I don't want somebody, I don't want a submission view where all of the answers are immediately visible to the students, and then they call all their friends in class and tell them what the answers are. Again, as you're looking at the submission view options, you'll see uh, show the questions and then show the answers. And the layout of this particular part of the page could be improved. So it doesn't really show you that yes is an option and no is an option. But when you're adding a submission view to let students see the details, these are the choices you want to start with. Now, sometimes a quiz, uh, again, it, you want it to be auto-graded. You want students to get that immediate feedback. So again, no short answer and no long answer questions. Otherwise, um, you have to grade it, even though it's only two questions that need to be manually graded. They could get the, the eight answers uh, feedback right away. So I'm demonstrating in this slide that I have imported a variety of questions, one of each, and I'm making two type two quizzes, part A and part B. So I've uh, check marked the uh, questions that are objective that, that can be automatically graded, and I'm leaving out short answer and long answer. So my first quiz, part A, is going to include those questions. I will come back and make a second quiz where I have the short answer question and the long answer question in, a, in part B. All right, when you're logged in as an instructor, you can preview the quiz. And you'll notice that I've highlighted on this slide that two of the questions, four and five, have a darker icon, a more vivid icon. So those are the questions that have been saved with a response has been saved, right? And then uh, the first question and the second question do not yet have a marked answer. But it always, it's, um, and it prompts students here, please save after each question. So when, stu when you're looking at a class as a student, you will see quizzes. In this case, the course name isn't political science, you know, whatever. It's called My New Course. So this is just one of our demo courses that we've worked with. So My New Course would be your English class. It would be your work experience class. It would be something. And then the list of quizzes. So here you see what what's, quizzes are active, available for students. You see that I've got a practice quiz. You see that I've got the two attempts and unlimited attempts. When I'm in the actually taking a quiz, again, I choose a radio button to indicate what my answer is. I click the Save button. And at the bottom of the quiz, I hit the Submit button. When I then want to see how I did, tell me how many, ans how many answers I got right, it tells me that um, I, was, I successfully submitted my quiz, but it doesn't tell me my grade immediately. 
when I do change and and I've now gone to my my detailed submission view so after the quiz window has closed this is the kind of thing I would see as a student so I would see up at the top at circle one I see I didn't get this question right at zero of two points available and that's because in the question the submission view details I said show question score out of score when I look at number two notice the arrow is showing me the right answer uh, my wrong answer is marked with an X and so over on the view details you say you see that I've checked show question answers so that's the way a student would see that um, towards the bottom of the screen you'll see the attempt score and the overall grade so um, and this was marked uh, the highest attempt because I might have two attempts or unlimited attempts tells me how I've done when students look at the submission view you see individual attempts attempt one okay so if I had multiple attempts uh, available to me I could have attempt two three four you know and again it could be unlimited but at some point that doesn't become practical and then when you're in the grades area again the students see this kind of report and now I'm ready to show you kind of in a live demo these same steps to take that CSV file upload it um, make the quiz active and go through the settings to make sure it's auto graded uh, look at some of the other kinds of problems and um, I know that something is going to happen uh, where a quiz doesn't get reported to a grade item and just again for your reference if you need to copy down any of these URLs or get these job aids this again is my reference open up part two for the live demo